Hey, Flappy Birds implemented in TypeScript types. The ultimate type level trickery. Okay, I wrote a 2D Flappy Bird game purely in TypeScript types. I literally hate this. I, I literally hate this. I, I literally hate what I'm seeing. Um, but, you know, I, I, I got to say something. What in the what in the name of a TI 480, whatever the super is or whatever it is, how in the hell is it running at what appears to be 60 frames a second? How is it this smooth? How TypeScript can't even compile a single file? What is this? What is this? Uh, let's see. Yes, you heard it right. This game is written entirely in TypeScript type annotations, which is, if you do not know, are Turing complete. So how the hell am I running it in the browser, rendering the game in TypeScript types? The basic rundown is that I created a type-level TypeScript runtime, allowing TypeScript types to be run outside of the TypeScript compiler and language server. What the fuck am I looking at? <laughs> now port Doom to TypeScript types. Until Doom... Uh, Oh, gosh. There's something good here. There's something good here. Uh, until Doom can be created with TypeScript types, types uh, TypeScript isn't a real language. That feels about right. Is that about right? Uh, insanity of article? All, all of it. Oh, my goodness. How do I search tabs? What's the search? I have so many tabs open. I, I'm completely uh, overwhelmed by it. Banger, yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, That was it was a banger tweet. Uh, so how the hell am I running in the browser? Okay, let's see. This runtime is a custom VM implemented in Zig. <laughs> yes. Yes. This is the greatest article ever. Oh my goodness, which executes a custom bytecode format I compiled the TypeScript code into. Oh my goodness, let me go into more detail. <laughs> this is such a W. Such a W. Okay, now that actually, let's see. Now, the actual type level TypeScript code for the game is surprisingly simple. First, you must understand type level TypeScript is a purely functional programming language. A key tenant of pure and functional programming language is that the state is immutable. So instead of mutating some global state, bird position, and the pipes, we thread the game through st uh, a state through a series of functions which each uh, return a new copy of the game state updated. Each frame, or every frame, the game does uh, something like this. New game state, type new game state equals move pipes, apply gravity, handle jumps, game state. Oh my goodness. This is like, this is not crazy. Can, how do we hire whoever this is? But I will, <laughs> I find this elegantly beautiful. It's very clear to see the transformations that happen on the game state. <laughs> It's beautiful. This is just a, it's just beautiful. It's just, be, it's just beautiful. It's fucking beautiful. It's beautiful. No, 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 no. It's not beautiful. The next tricky part is rendering the game. We need to draw the bird, the pipes in the background, drawing ins uh, inspiration from graphics. Let's see, hold on. Drawing inspiration from graphics APIs. I had the idea to give the game state a command buffer an array of drawing commands. A draw command looks like this. Oh no, you literally create every kind of draw command and you somehow program, how do you programmatically create it though? The task of rendering is, uh, is, is filling the command buffer with the appropriate draw commands to display our game, which can be neatly done at the end of our game's uh, transformations. Okay, draw state game, extend state, re return state, or is state and draw commands, draw the background, draw the bird, Draw the pipes. What is bird X and bird Y? Each frame, the game state is updated. The command buffer is populated, and then the runtime takes a few draw commands and executes them. Uh, and that's the core game loop. Obviously, I skipped over a lot of details. <laughs> this is how we do it in game dev? A little game dev, you know. Game dev is just a, a little bit of a zig wrapper and then a bunch of TypeScript types. I mean, let's just be real. TypeScript's the ultimate game programming language. TypeScript types. Uh, now, that's the core of the game loop. Okay. 
Uh, you can check out the full game here. Uh, TypeScript code for checking collisions of the bird on the pipes, ground, etc. Oh my goodness. That is insane. How does the runtime work? Well, there's two main parts. The compiler written in Rust. I love this. Takes TypeScript uh, source code and spits out bytecode. The VM written in Zig is a custom stack virtual machine that runs bytecode to evaluate the types. This man's a man after my own heart right here. A man after my own heart. This is everything I want to see always. Always and forevermore. This is beautiful. This is beautiful right here. Uh, I've compiled the runtime to Wasm, so it takes uh, the draw command from the game and executes them using the Web Canvas API. Conceptually, the runtime could use any graphics backend like OpenGL, Vulkan, Metal, etc. The VM uh, has specialized instructions for computation that would otherwise be expensive in regular type-level TypeScript. A prominent group uh, of such expensive computations are arithmetic, uh, arithmetic operations. The type-level TypeScript, you can hack arithmetic uh, by using arrays or templates uh, template strings, both are extremely expensive operations, especially in comparison to how trivial uh, arithmetic is for the CPO to compute normally. I decided arithmetic. People say arithmetic. What is that? Why do they say that? And why is it stuck in my brain? Which one's correct? Arithmetic or arithmetic? Hey, thank you. Thank you, Bob. Not original Bob. No one has said it except for you. Adjective, noun, difference. Yeah, it turns out, TJ, you don't know what you're talking about, stupid dum-dum. One's an adjective. Oh, okay. Trivial arithmetic is for CPU to compute normally. Uh, I decided to provide a standard library with functions uh, that get compiled into sp uh, specialized and very performant instructions in the VM. Okay, nice. Add, subtraction, less than or equal to operator. Nice. You don't need anything else other than less than or equal to operator. You don't even need a not command, apparently. Forget that not. Compute the X Fibonacci number. Okay. X extends number. LTE X1 extends true. X else add sub sub. Okay. The main function computes the 35th uh, Fibonacci number and prints it. Wouldn't this like take forever? Okay. Jakery people. You got to give to Extra Life. By the way, today we're doing a charity stream, a 24-hour charity stream. We're a couple hours in. We are two hours and 43 minutes in. Thank you for the 2,800 people that are here. Thank you, Jay Gold. Thank you, everybody. This is going to be awesome. Thank you, Not Original Bob. Okay, we're doing a good job here for the kids here. Over 50 grand already. We're barely into it. Already average React Andy in shambles right now. I'm pretty excited about all the cool optimizations I can implement in the VM. I mentioned earlier that type-level TypeScript is purely functional programming language. We can actually borrow a lot of cool optimizations from implement uh, from the implementation of FP languages. Performant immutable data structures, hash array mapped tries, RRB trees. Don't even know what you're trying to say to me. I understand. I understand all these words individually. This is the first time this has ever happened where I literally understand everything individually. But when you put them together in that order, I do not know what they mean. I have no clue. I genuinely have no clue what that means. I mean, I don't get it. Uh, specialized reference counting and reuse. Uh, tail call optimizations. Uh, already implemented this. Get owned. Get wrecked. <laughs> I'm pretty happy with uh, the split. Let's see, the split uh, using Rust for the front end and Zig for the hardcore low-level implementation of the VM. Rust high-level and zero-cost abstraction makes it well-suited for walking ASTs and generating bytecode with speed, absolutely. Oh, there's a there's a Box Elder bug on my screen. Come here, Box Elder bug. How did you get in here? Come here, Boxy. I live really close to Box Elder. Okay, you're being annoying. You're gonna get. I'm gonna. I'm literally gonna kill you if if you don't stop this. All right. Now now you're dead. Now you're dead, kid. You're dead. You're dead. All right. There you go. Killed it. Uh, as nice to it. Didn't didn't listen to me. Also, instead of writing another TypeScript parser, uh, I get to leverage the TypeScript parser of the Ox project, which is the best JSTS parser I've used so far. Oh, I didn't realize that was a thing. Really, Ox project? What the what the hell is even that? What about SWC? Uh, Oxidation compiler is creating a suite of high-performance tools for JavaScript and TypeScript Ox. Really? I haven't heard of any of this. Have you guys heard of this? Uh, I always talk to the annoying bugs. I hate when it makes it, yeah. Sometimes you get them. I've never heard of this, though. I know SWC. I've never seen this. You guys doing Oxy around here? Hell yeah, Oxy Lint. Smash me, daddy. 
All right, is SWC on here? Okay, so SWC is pretty good. Rome, wow. Okay. I don't know. See, whenever I see this, I don't believe it, right? <laughs> this I do believe. Linter benchmark. The linter on more than 50 times faster than he has lint. Yes, and scales with the number. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. This could be cool. I, I'm going to give it a check. I'm going to give it a little look-see. That sounds actually super cool. All right. Uh, why is it in Rust? Okay. The future of TYVM, a performant type checker, uh, a type-level TypeScript runtime started out as a type checker for TypeScript called TYVM. Um, the idea was to use a VM to exponentially speed up the type checking has been tried before. I decided uh, to try my hand at it because I uh, just find this stuff fun. Absolutely. I just had an idea of focusing only type-level TypeScript first. My plan was that because of the simplicity of just type-level TypeScript, we could nail down the aspect first before moving into type checking the entirety of TypeScript. This would allow for TYVM to be useful far more quickly. An example is that we could use TypeScript tooling. There's a lot of tools to convert TypeScript ty uh, types to X, where X is something like GraphQL, Prisma, Schemas, JSON types. Um, okay. All things that emotionally hurt me, I see. Uh, what is this? What is this? A, a list of things that hurt me? Uh, but all of them are pretty limited and not uh, being able to support complex TypeScript types. Yeah. This could jumpstart my dream of making type-level TypeScript a very powerful DSL for writing schemas. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a. I think you can make uh, protobufs. The problem about TypeScript is that the, the language is so complex; it's really hard to make it fit into other ones without accidentally over like sh like going over your skis on it. And what I mean by that is that to, you can't protobufs. You can't represent everything you can represent in TypeScript in protobufs, if I'm not mistaken. And so you kind of have you run into this problem where it can be a little bit confusing. You know what I mean? We can be a little bit confused. We're taking, uh, yeah, this is a small detour from Harpoon. Let's see. When running the update user mutation, we can update any field from the user type, except for its ID, of course. Without TypeScript types, I'd have to rewrite all the fields so that the, uh, so it could be error prone and I'd change user, but I'd forget to update the mutation arguments. Yeah. To me, this is the most expressive way. Yes, I actually really like this idea. I really like the idea of being able to have something that generates types from this, but I don't really know how it looks. You know what I mean? Check out the Flappy. I love that he built Flappy Bird here, though. Uh, okay, footnotes, some awesome stuff with uh, that. Very, hit me up on Twitter. All right. Oh, I'm following. I'm following back. All right. Uh, this guy's all boners for rust. <laughs> yes, the man after my own heart, even as a quote. Oh my goodness. I love I love you, Zach. Zach, I love you. <laughs> the guy is all boners for, for a rust, man. Did you see that? He's also boners for Zig. Oh my goodness. Hey, this was a great article. It, I love it that it was a really like it gave me everything I wanted to see. I love that you could do this. Like, this makes perfect sense. Now that I look at it, I actually kind of get this. Um I love the idea of having Rust for the compiler, Zig for the runtime. I think that's super smart because Zig is just really great. This just feels better for Zig, right? You don't have to fight the borrow checker. You can kind of do all the things you need to do to make a runtime simple. Uh, allocation and all that. You can write custom allocators. It seems like Zig, this is a place. This is Zig. This is Zig if I've ever seen a Zig thing. Awesome. I love it. I love it. I love it. Beautiful. The game, it runs so smooth, might I add. So whatever you're doing in your VM, great job on your VM. Your VM is beautiful. I would like to say that your Flappy Bird play, though, I'm not going to lie to you, you're kind of pathetic at this Flappy Bird play, okay? And you also aren't getting the bird rotations, which is pissing me off, okay? Your bird has to kind of dive down. You know what I'm talking about? Zach Overflow, beautiful, though. Beautiful. Beautiful. The name. Boners for Rustigen. <laughs>